Hi, I'm Junior Banza. I grew up in Kinshasa singing songs like this with my family every night. Our new film series entitled Not By Bread Alone includes the story of how my family joined the church in Switzerland. But my family's conversion story has a lot in common with those of others in the DR Congo and French speaking Africa. This is why we named the film series Not By Bread Alone. Of course, this phrase comes from Jesus when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. These are words that speak to the heart of African Christians. When poverty deprives, disease sickens, war menaces and human predators victimize for the sake of wealth and power, hundreds of millions of steadfast and resilient Christians in Africa are sustained in their trials by their faith in Christ as they work for a better future. Not by bread alone is not a lesson in geography or statistics. Instead, it tells the stories of faithful members like these who have joyfully embraced the gospel sometimes at great personal cost. For example, the episodes present stories of bright and dedicated missionaries, elders and sisters, whose devotion becomes clear when we begin to learn their backstories. This is Cedric Chiamwe, who worked selling bananas, traveling from town to town on his bicycle to earn $250 needed for his missionary passport. It took him four years. And this is Mathieu Kalume Abilwa. His family received the testimony of the restored gospel in the 1970s, along with hundreds of other nearby saints. But the villages where they lived were so remote that missionaries could not go there. Wondering what had happened to these saints, two recently returned missionaries braved a long and risky journey to find out if these groups of converts still existed. After many difficulties, they learned that these unbaptized converts were still true to their testimonies and had continued to hold Sunday school and study the Book of Mormon in their villages for nearly 50 years, almost completely on their own. Matthew's mother pleaded with the two young men to find a way for the 12 children to be baptized, but they were not authorized to do so. Finally, at the age of 25, Matthew convinced his father and mother to let him travel alone to the city of Lubumbashi, 600 kilometers away, where he could be taught, baptized, receive the priesthood, and be called to serve a full-time mission. Movingly, he tells of how sweet it was to be able to take the sacrament for the very first time in his life. In one episode, Elder Willie Binene Sabwe, now in Area 70, tells the story of the life-threatening journey from ethnic persecution he made with his family and thousands of others. His young life was a string of disappointments. Then, everything took a major turn for the better when he met Lily, whom the Lord had shown him in a dream. Together, they raised a family, built a school, and with the help of the church, mobilized the entire village day in and day out for a period of three years to dig an 18-mile trench by hand through the forest to bring clean water to their family. Another episode illustrates what we like to call the ripple effect of generosity. People in need being helped and then going on to help other people. For example, David and Josephine Mwinza lived with their boys in a one-room home of a few square meters on a noisy street in Kinshasa. They had no electricity or plumbing. In the middle of the room, was a pedal-powered sewing machine where David earned a living as a tailor. 
He is completely blind in both eyes. His wife has a handicap. After joining the church, David and Josephine dreamed of starting a school where disabled people could learn to sew and earn a living. Through the help of kind friends, that dream became a reality. Here, David, who has never seen a school or the student with his own eyes, definitely teaches his class how to measure, cut, and sew. After years of preparation, David and Josephine Mwinza were sealed in the Kinshasa temple. The time has come to tell the full story of the saints. Now, in this special moment, while new temples rise to witness the faithfulness of these spiritually sensitive people, our film series will remind the rising generation worldwide that the core of the bright, beating heart of Africa, the source of light and life and love of its people is not the daily bread, but rather the true word of God, now restored in its fullness to the earth.